Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at 5 tips we can use to give our pictures more impact. Let's go! Tip number one is using a wide angle lens close up. By using a wide angle lens close up, we create distortion which also creates perspective. This can be particularly good in pictures we want to look more dynamic. For example, here is a picture of my daughter on the train. She looks quite angry in this picture and I've used a wide angle lens to distort the background and really bring her forwards. That makes the picture look more dynamic. And again here I've used it with this picture of the doctor, I've brought him forwards and where I've got a wide angle on, all the files in the background create a lot of perspective. Again, making this picture look more dynamic. There's different ways you can use this. For example, it's used a lot on landscapes, particularly things like roads and streams. Again, the distortion creates a lot of perspective, which is really desirable. It can look great on clouds as well. I've used it here with this cow. It's got the big head and its body's a lot smaller. And it just gives a bit more impact to the picture. And if we look at this uh, picture of this church I took in Reykjavik, I'm not going to try to pronounce its name. Uh, if we look at a picture from further away, it's a pretty standard picture. But if we get in closer, look up and use the wide angle, it creates a lot of perspective. And again, it gives a picture more impact than the first. I believe most of these were shot on a 24mm lens. Anything 24mm or wider will really give a strong distortion effect. When you use a wide angle and it creates distortion to create the perspective, it can look really good on things like landscapes. You just need to be really careful when you're doing videos of people. I recommend keeping them in the centre of the frame because if they go too close to the edge, you can stretch their head out and give them a bit of a cone shape. And it's not a good look. So that's it for tip number one. Let's look at tip number two. Technique number two is going to be shooting into the sun. Now, this will create problems, but it will also create opportunities for unique pictures. So when you're shooting towards the sun, you're going to get a lot of glare potentially, so you need to find ways of dealing with that. Uh, keeping a lens hood on the lens is always a good idea, and maybe not shooting directly at the sun, for an example, putting an object between you and the sun, or shooting so the sun is slightly out of frame. To give you some ideas of how you can use this technique, uh, we're going to look at a few of these pictures. If you put an object between yourself and the sun and it's transparent, this will really help light up the picture. Here we've got some prayer flags in Nepal. And by using the sun as a backlight, it really brings out the colours in the flags. This is also a really great technique if we're taking pictures of things like steam or smoke. Here are some photos from Iceland. Uh, we've got the steam coming out of the river and the sun really lights this up. If the sun was in front of us, it would not light it in the same way at all. And it's also really useful for things like rain and snow. Uh, here we've got some people in Nepal uh, trying to get shelter from the rain and by shooting towards the sun it really lights up the raindrops and really can create some impact in the picture. So by shooting towards the sun we can create silhouettes as well. I've done this here in Nepal with this paraglider. We can see the sun in the background lighting the clouds beautifully and we've got this silhouette here. And this can really help for a different kind of picture. Okay guys, so I hope that's made a lot of sense. If you do have any questions about this please leave them in the comment section down below. Let's go on to tip number three. Tip number three is using off-camera flash or an off-camera light source. So if you've got your flash gun and uh, instead of putting it on top of the camera, you can uh, put it off the camera slightly. So by setting my camera, so by setting my flash gun to remote and my camera to commander mode, I can take a picture of my camera and it'll also set off the flash. Now this won't work with every flash gun and every camera, but you can buy remotes that will work with every flash gun and every camera. And you can also buy an extension cable which will connect your camera to an off-camera flash. Now this is a really useful technique and it can create really dramatic pictures with impact. Now when I worked for the newspaper, they used to send me out to do this a lot, they knew I enjoyed doing it. And uh, for example, there was one time where a man had used a cosmetic product and it had almost killed him. And by using a direct off-camera flash, it really gave a sinister look. Now sometimes when I use this technique, I actually get a piece of A4 paper and I'll use an elastic band and hold it around the flash gun. And by doing this, it creates a direct light and it's a very harsh shadow, which is what we want for this effect. If you want more information on how to use this technique, uh, post a comment in the section below and I'll make an in-depth video about this. Now by using this technique, we can really achieve some moody pictures, usually with a dark background. So if we take a look at this picture here of this uh, person in the balaclava, by using a black balaclava with a black background, it kind of fades into the background and it really draws attention to the eyes and it makes it look a lot more sinister than if it was shooting head on. Again, if we look at this lizard's foot here with the sharp claws, I've actually just used the lighting in the tank to do this, but it still gives a nice off-camera effect. I've also used this technique on this composer here, and instead of using a black background, I've actually chosen to use the sheet music. I've also made sure I position the composer where the background starts to get darker, just to make sure he really pops out. And with the picture that's barring out here, I've moved the uh, camera around to the back slightly more than the side, and it gives you more of a rim light than the side on view. 
And one last thing to note with this, uh, just like lighting from the back with the sun, uh, off-camera flash is really good for picking up like dust particles, smoke and steam. Okay guys, so I hope that's all made sense. Again, if you do have any questions about this, uh, just post them in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to go over it. Technique number four is gonna be using color. Now obviously we're gonna be using color in almost every picture we take, but by using bright, vivid colors and also using colors that contrast each other, we can really create impactful images. Now if we look at a picture of this pepper here, I've used the red pepper and I've decided here to go with a blue light background. And to do this, I've used an off-camera flash uh, with a blue gel on, and this makes the icicles look blue and it just gives the uh, shadows on the red a blue hint as well, which can really draw the eye and create impact. If I were to put green pepper in this picture, it just would not have the same effect. Here I've got this picture of this uh, red-eyed tree frog, and now for this I specifically wanted a red-eyed tree frog because the red and the green are really vivid contrasting colours, and uh, where I've used a white background, it really makes the frog pop out. And then here if we look at this uh, picture I took at Fest, this is a faithless, where the lights have lit the smoke all different colours. Now this has really created a more impactful picture than if the light was just white rather than different colours. I also think it'd be useful to point out here that where the smoke's been lit from the side, it really creates a different effect than if it'd been lit from the front. Now if you really want to look more into this tip, um, it might be worth looking at some art videos and looking to see how artists use colours differently. And now it's time to look at our last tip. Tip number five, and this is going to be getting up close. This works particularly well with people, but can be used in a lot of different situations. So by getting up close, it can really create an intense picture with a lot of impact. Now I took this picture for a project here. Uh, this is my little sister with jam on her face. She was reluctant to do it, but my mum made her. But by getting nice and close and uh, making sure the eyes are sharp, it's created quite an impactful picture. Whereas if I stood back, it wouldn't have had the same effect at all. It's also worth noting that where the jam's red and her eyes are going a bluey colour, it also creates quite a lot of contrast with the colours. If we look at the next picture now, it's not just uh, people that work on this, will also work on animals, and uh, with owls with particularly big eyes, they're particularly fun to shoot. And again, this is creating quite an impactful shot. Where with humans and any animals, in fact, eye contact is the first form of contact we have, so this can really grab your attention. As I was saying, this technique won't just work with people, it can also work in other environments. Uh, here I took a picture of a fire, and where I stood back and taken a picture, uh, you can see there's a lot going on, and it looks fairly dramatic. But if we come in and look at the next picture, this is a lot more intense, and it really pulls us into the picture, and it gets rid of everything around the outside, and we really focus on where we want to be focused. So guys, I really hope you've taken away something from this and there's plenty of tips to look into and plenty of things to play with here. It's really fun to experiment and I hope this can really take your pictures up to a different level. Okay guys, so I hope that's clear. Um, if you do have any questions or if you would like any follow-up videos, uh, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you found this video useful, uh, liking or subscribing really shows support and it's a great way to help me move forwards. So that brings us to the end. Uh, thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next one.